I've gotten tons of requests to show you how to create layers for your NFT collections. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do that using either Photoshop or Figma. If you haven't seen this video, I created a collection of 10,000 NFTs using a generative process. Then I uploaded and minted them all for free. I don't go into detail on how I drew and exported the layers though, and I've gotten a ton of questions around that. So first off, I'm not promoting the creation of junk images. I expect that you have some sort of artistic ability and that you know what you want to create. You're going to need to create these layers yourself, but I'm going to show you how to organize your layers and export them properly to be used in your NFT collection. Well, first you'll need to calculate how many layers that you need to create in order to generate the amount of images that you want. In this example, we'll create 10,000 unique images from our layers. Let's say that we have six layers, background, base, eyes, mouth, hat, and glasses. The calculation to figure out how many variations will result is the number of variations in a layer times the number of variations in a layer and so on. So if we had 10 background variations, one base, which will be the same every time, 10 eye variations, 10 mouth, 10 hats, and 10 glasses. Then this calculation would be 10 times 1 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, and that would equal 100,000. Now it's a little bit more than we need, but you get the picture. This is how you calculate it. Now that we understand how that works, let's jump into Photoshop. I'm going to show you how to organize and export your layers first in Photoshop, and then we'll do the exact same process in Figma. So if you don't care about how to do it in Photoshop, then you can just skip ahead. And when using Photoshop, the first thing that you need to decide is the size of your canvas. You have to decide that ahead of time because Photoshop creates pixel based images. So if you start out with a small 24 by 24 pixel image, and then you decide later on that you want to scale that up to 1000 by 1000, it's going to look very bad. So pick the proper canvas size first. Now, the easiest way to demonstrate this process is by using emojis. What you see here looks like a jumbled mess, but these are all of the layers that we need to make randomly generated emojis. But what we're going to focus on is the layers. So I have eyes, mouth, face, and backgrounds. And these are all in folders or groups, and each one has different variations. We can toggle the visibilities to preview what it would look like. So if we turn some of these off, let's just look at the boo eyes and the zipper mouth. And then for the face, this is our base image, it's just a circle. And then we have some backgrounds as well. So we have green, purple, and blue. So we can turn some of those off. So we can see how these could randomly be picked to generate unique images. So this is how you should structure your layers. Again, you should come up with your own layers. Be creative and draw them. Let's turn all of these back on. Now there are a couple of ways to export your layers. First, let's look at the wrong way. So if we go up here to file and then export and export as, you'll see here that it's going to export all of the layers on top of each other. And that's not what we want. So you might think, well, let's just go through and export each one of these individually. So if I right click and do export as, now you'll see that it's just exporting these eyes and it's not exporting the entire image around the eyes. If we did it this way, then the generator wouldn't know where to place the eyes. So it's important that every layer is the same size. So here's the right way. We're going to go up here to file, then export, and then layers to files. So we'll need to pick the destination. So click browse, and then we'll pick a destination or the file name prefix. I don't want anything. So I'm just going to delete that. Now we have this visible layers only. So there's a couple of ways to export these. We can export all of them all at once, and it's just going to go all into one folder or we could export each layer group individually into their own folders. So I'm going to leave this up to you and I'll show you both ways. So first, we're just going to export everything like this. So we're going to hit run and you're going to see Photoshop doing some weird stuff. It's basically going through each layer and exporting each one one by one for you. So I'm going to speed this process up for time. All right, it has finished. So let's take a look and see what we got. All right, so now we can see all of our layers have been exported individually. We click on them, we can see each layer in the preview here. So now what we would want to do is take each layer group. So all of our eyes and put them into their own folder and then put all of the mouths into their own folder and the backgrounds and so on. Also notice these weird numbers that go in front of our layer names. At first, this looks a little strange, but it's actually telling us which group and which layer number it is. So this one is group zero 
layer zero. This one's the same group zero, but layer one. Zero layer two, zero three, zero four, zero five. And then this one is group one layer zero. So this is a, a different group. So it's trying to help us by telling us which group and layer it is. But in the end, you're gonna want to edit these and remove those numbers so that you just have your layer names. But if this manual process of editing these layer names is too much for you, uh, then I have a small script that I can show you how to modify that will change this. And I'll show you that in a bit. So now instead of doing it this way, uh, we can, let's just delete these and we're going to make new folders. So I'm gonna create a new folder here and I'm gonna name this eyes. I'll create another folder called background and mouth and face. So now if you wanna export these one by one, let's start out with the backgrounds. So we just need to hide everything but the backgrounds. So now when we go to export and then layers to files, we'll go to browse and then let's pick, this was backgrounds. So we're gonna pick our backgrounds folder, uh, remove this prefix. And again, it's only gonna do the visible layers. And so it's only going to export the backgrounds this time. So we'll hit run and this was gonna be a lot quicker. It's just going to export our backgrounds. Okay, and then we could just do the same process for the face and then the mouth and then the eyes. All right, and so this results in all of our backgrounds being in our background folder, eyes, face, and mouth. So now we can copy these layers into the layers directory of our generator that we went over in the create an NFT collection video. Then our generator will pick random variations and create a bunch of unique images. All right, next I'm gonna show you how to edit that Photoshop script so that it doesn't add those numbers to the beginning of your layer names. This is completely optional. You don't have to do this. You can manually change those names if you want. So here I'm on Windows. I'll also show you the directory on Mac. I'll put that on the screen here. Uh, but for Windows, it is C, Program Files, Adobe, and then inside here you'll see Photoshop. And then inside Photoshop, you'll see Presets. And then scroll down and you'll see scripts. So the script that we're looking for is export layers to files. So I'm going to open this up in VS code. Let's search for something in this file. I'm going to press control F to pull up our find, and then I'm going to look for zero suppress. All right. So let's go through here and we are looking for. So right here where it says file name body plus equals zero suppress, we're going to comment this out. So at the beginning of this line, press forward slash forward slash and that's going to comment this line out so that it doesn't run. Now we see another thing here, it says file name body, and it's gonna add an underscore and then the layer name, and we don't want that underscore either. So I'm just gonna copy this, just so we have it later in case you wanna change it back. And I'm gonna paste the same line here. I'm gonna comment out this first line, and then on this one, I'm gonna remove that part where it just says equals layer name, because all we want is the layer name. We don't want anything else. And so then let's go through and there's one more. We're gonna, in our find, we're just gonna go down to our next find for zero suppress. And we're gonna comment this one out as well, forward slash, forward slash. All right, and that's it. We're just gonna save this file. So when I press control S to save, it's going to prompt you to save as an administrator. So go ahead and click retry as admin. And then your computer is going to prompt you to verify that you want to make this change. We'll say yes. And then we can close out this file. So now let's run through the same script. I'm just going to do it on the face since there's just one layer to make it quick and easy. And I'm going to export layers to files. I'm going to browse and pick my face location and remove the prefix. Run. All right, let's check it out. All right, so now we see the first one that we created has those numbers, uh, but the second one that we just created doesn't have the numbers anymore. So it's just gonna make it a little bit easier for you if you don't mind editing a few lines in that script. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to do this exact same thing in Figma. Figma is not pixel-based like Photoshop, it's vector-based. And basically that means that you can resize anything as big or small as you want, and there's gonna be no change in quality. And again, the easiest way to demonstrate this is by using an emoji. So here it looks like a jumbled mess, but these are all of the layers that we need to make randomly generated emojis. Now what we're going to focus on is the layers. So we have eyes, mouth, face, and background. These are all in what Figma calls frames. 
Now, this is important. There are groups as well, uh, but in order to export these properly, they need to be in frames. All right, so if we go click on eyes here, we can see that this is a frame. Now, if I open up eyes and we have the boo eyes, and then let's look here, there's a boo group. See over here, this is a group. So we can see here that the group only encompasses the minimum space required for its contents. But a frame can be any size, and here I have them all set to the size of the image. So these frames will export the entire image. And we'll see why that's important when we start to export. We can see here that each group has variations. So let's turn some of these off. We can turn the visibility. We'll keep rolling eyes on. We'll turn the rest of these off. We see that we just have those eyes. Let's go through mouth, and we'll just keep the tongue. And then face is just one variation. It's a base. It's always going to be the same. And then for backgrounds, we've got some different colors, green, blue, and purple. So you can see how all of these layers can be uh, randomly combined to generate unique images. So let's go ahead and unhide all of these. And so this is how you should structure your layers. And again, you should come up with your own layers, be creative and draw them. So let's take a look at exporting now. So there are a couple of ways to export your layers. Now first, let's look at the wrong way again. So if we go to our group, so we have again this boo uh, frame and then we have this boo group now if i went over here to the right side and i go down to export there's a preview here and it's going to show you exactly what it's going to export so it's just exporting the eyes and not the entire image if you do it this way then your layers will all be different sizes and the generator is not going to know where to put them every layer needs to be the same size so what we actually need to export is the frames again go to the frame we go down to our preview, we can see that it's exporting the entire frame and the eyes are placed perfectly. So there's no automator built into Figma like there is in Photoshop, but it's very easy as long as you set everything up properly ahead of time. So what we'll do in eyes, I'm going to select the first one here, boo, and then I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to click glasses and that's going to select all of these. And now I can export. It's going to export six layers. And it's important that you make sure that it, this is PNG. They have to be PNG images. So we're going to export these six layers. And I'm going to create a new folder here. This was the eyes. So let's do eyes. And this is where we're going to save it. And we can see here that it exported each layer individually. So now we just need to go through our other layers. So we'll do mouth. And we'll do the same thing. Hold down the shift key. Select all of these. And we're going to export. And we're going to export these six layers. Now this time, instead of eyes, we're going to create a new folder, call it mouth. And that's where this set is going to go. And then let's do the same thing with face. Now face is just one. Again, make sure that you do the frame, export face, and we'll create a new folder and we'll call this one face. And that's where that one will go. And then the backgrounds. So select all of these backgrounds and export. We'll go back and do a new folder here and call it backgrounds. Save that. And now if we go back to our layers, we have our face and we have our backgrounds and our mouths. Now we can copy all of these layers into our layers directory in our generator, which I demonstrated in the create an NFT collection video. So then our generator is going to pick random variations from these folders to create unique images. Okay, so I hope that this clears up some of the questions that I've been getting, and I can't wait to see what you come up with. Be sure to join my Discord to show off your creations. I want to see them. Like this video to help me out, and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this.